I just need okay we have to click on okay so, so do everybody see one uh, image now is that okay. full, full screen okay so full screen we can okay. see everything okay. perfect um so dealing with incredibly diverse assignments uh, with very different places uh, sites and countries Dietma and I have been lucky both as teachers and as landscape architects our presentation today will be a journey uh, to places and gardens we devised and realized uh, through a good dose of images we would like to provide some thoughts and inspiration the overall structure of this presentation is episodical all episodes are richly illustrated. Our early childhood, now I have to move this somehow. Our early childhood has influenced our work. Uh, my hometown is Munich, and this picture displays the city and its setting. Warm winds from Italy create this kind of open vistas to the mountains. As children, I spent most weekends out of uh, the city. Um, when I wanted uh, to stay within the city and enjoy nature, uh, we went to this place. Um, uh, the Olympic Park in Munich, built in the 70s, and I was a little girl at that time, but I remember adults talking about the Olympic Games and the construction projects. I grew up in a small village, and and that is Steve Master. So the urban and the rural. So I, I grew up here, and that's my cathedral. So my brother, for instance, is a mason. There's a quarry on top of that hill. We had a small farm uh, within a climate where grapes and apple trees can grow. So we always, as children, we chased away blackbirds. Get out of here. These are our grapes. These terraces, again, are my cathedral or my Olympic Park. If you delve into this landscape, you will find a good scale for humans and wonderful seasonal events like bloomy meadows and trees. I did, didn't know where all the birds came from every year, but they nested in the trees we enjoyed the cider, the apples and the pie. The grass was for the cattle in the barn. Everything has had a plausible reason, a rational and economic system, unifying economy, ecology and beauty. To start a new adventure, we both left our urban and rural homes. Slowly but dangerous, we met at the periphery of Munich. Our personal meeting point was a hill in Freising, a city close to Munich. The Alps visible at the horizon, while studying landscape architecture at the Technical University in Munich, uh, on the campus in Freising, we cultivated our first garden. There is a need of of inspiring teachers in orders in one's life. It started with our parents and continued with our teachers. They really got us thinking about gardens and the world. We would like to mention one person in particular. Uh, Peter Lutz, he knows as a, uh, he's known as an extraordinary uh, gardener, landscape and architect and teacher and taught at the Technical University of Munich while we were students there. According to Peter Latz, a, ga a garden, quote, that is an experiment of achieving both an artwork and a state of nature, which were, elsewise would be replaced by natural succession, quote end. As students, we were fascinated by this project and Peter Latz's design thinking, a very inspiring approach. Many students' uh, projects dealt with the post 
post-industrial landscapes at that time. And for sure, we wanted to see and experience the project designed and realized by our teachers. Peter Lutz also introduced us to the concept of bricolage. We have been involved in the design and construction of the outdoor environment of our new institute on the campus in Freising. As opposed to the true craftsman, whom Levi Strauss calls the engineer, the bricoleur is adept at many tasks and at putting pre-existing things together in new ways, adapting his project to a fine infinity stock of materials and tools. Claude Lévi-Strauss noticed in his The Savage Mind, it is common practice to separate science from art, but it, it is also common down to, to an, it also comes down to an exercise in perception where suddenly you see something in something where others only see nothing. Dietmar and I believe that many of you will have experienced the feeling while engrossed in a topic or assignment, you suddenly come across connections and associations in images, texts, exhibitions, or simply while you are talking as taking a stroll, learning from Picasso. Levi Strauss was a fan of simplicity. Thinking is wild uh, because it doesn't take a predetermined path. It's a playful and adventurous. Uh, this thinking is like tinkering and it has something manual or technical. This is our first garden. The structures are not predefined. They're, they emerge from life, from work, from execution. They are cha changeable and correctable. Our first steps in professional practice. Dietmar and I have worked for several landscape architects at the beginning of our career. This image shows an important infrastructure project for, uh, for an entire region, a savage treatment plant in the rural area in Germany. We were hired as designers and project managers in parallel, uh, we, stated, we, we started to run our own firm, participating in design competitions and working on several design projects. And sometimes that is how life uh, goes sometimes, with important experiences uh, seeking us out rather than the other way around. Somehow we have been on the radar for a large garden. The task was a new botanical garden in Shanghai. It is not necessary to be either a botanist or an amateur gardener to wish to devote oneself with one's heart and soul to the task of an elaborating uh, with uh, to the task of elaborating a design for a botanic garden. In two five and six. We succeeded in the International Landscape and Urban Design Competition for the Chinchan Botanical Garden in Shanghai, China. The 206 hectare garden was part of the Expo 210 and is one of the world's largest botanical gardens. As a designer, you always hold out the hope that you will manage to design a place with a strong essence and a powerful aura. A place that perhaps exudes some degree of courage and audiat Oh, that's a hard word to pronounce. Audaciousness, with which you hope people will also perceive as a physical sensation. Landscapes are subject to constant transformation, just as you can incorporate a park into a city, you can also incorporate a garden into a landscape. There was a decent budget available for this project, so at that time it was around 300 million Canadian dollars. 
Better City, Better Life was the slogan for the Expo 210 in Shanghai. All the other nation pavilions migrated after the show, yet the Chenchan Botanic Garden continues to flourish in the Songyang district. And that's an image taken by one of my former students. And I'm pre pre pretty happy to see that the trees seems to do very well. Now, a big step, a big move. 14 years ago, we moved with our two young children at that time from Germany to Winnipeg, or if you prefer, from the north slope of the Alps into the vastness of the Branitoban Prairie. In parallel with our teaching at the University of Manitoba, we maintain an active creative practice because we believe that a good eye for plants and colors, for scale and materials, for communication and drawings, for concept and ideas needs ongoing practice. So the budgets for all our projects in Winnipeg have been low or don't even exist. But we don't consider this being a disadvantage, making more with less and finding beauty in spontaneity and imperfection is the key. All projects you will see very soon are pro bono. If you don't ask for money, you can demand risks. So it's about making, quote, Goethe, knowing is not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do. That's still a dream. I'm always looking for the last angels in landscape architecture, but also responding to some serious questions. So we call ourselves academic practitioners. At this point, we want to share some small urban natures in Winnipeg, but we also try to respond to some of some other fundamental questions. First one, why are we always so serious? This question considers landscape architecture's ambivalent relationship to pleasure and fun. Moral ardency, that's our pain. In ecology, the concepts of catastrophes is important for new life. Fallen angels, there seems to be an obsessive de desire to redeem a fallen world. For sure, we are very serious about landscapes, gardens, and our environments. But we are not allowed, but are we not allowed to have some fun too? Maybe a commitment to fun and sustainability can help to solve some serious, is some serious issues right in front of our doorsteps. When you move, you don't just move into a different country or different landscape. So we also moved into a different climate. Winnipeg is a city where people's individual calendars are comprised of nine months of winter and three months of bad skating. Everybody has to live with this extreme climate, even when it's 40 below. This was a design studio a few winters ago. Initially, we gathered snow from a parking lot, mainly to, due to the fact that this building material is cheap and abundant, or actually it's for free in Winnipeg. Tons of this snow was poured on a riparian clearing along the Red River in an elliptical form. The classical shape acted for us as the white harp of the academy, radiating elegance and forming the center of four additional snow structures. A field of columns as well as a generous dining room complemented the peaceful setting. The long dining table and seats were close to a large stock of trees providing shelter and discretion. These were our drawing tools for this studio. We simply traced the outline onto the powdery canvas. Our building material again was the snow that the prairie winter produced and throughout that year. We took the white stuff to a whole new level. We provided a commemorate snow stage for rich design studio experience. 
The students carved snow, piled up stairs and rows of seatings, level stages and ramps, sculpted snow banks, walls and snow topographies. They monitored wind, weather and snow drifts. This space became a focus of attention for passers-by all winter long, a moment of diversion from everyday life, a slight flicker of interference in this landscape. We also invented events and performances to present the snow theater to the public. We cooked and invited our helpers and friends for dinner. Still too much plastic involved or on the table. Next time, just reusable cutlery will be uh, approved. So everything was thought through and almost prefabricated. And then we applied or employed the sun as our co-designer. There's always something you don't achieve. This thin layer here, look at this thin layer on this side of soil injected with white flower seeds. The sun melts the snow, the soil is, is uh, the growing medium, and the melted snow provides water for the first sip, and the chlorophyll will do the rest. Some seeds might erode into the river, others will be taken by birds and exc excreted somewhere else. Shit supports our design, ecology and lost natures. Look at the puppies. What a wonderful way to commemorate just a few days ago, to remember every year. We don't, why don't we provide living places for them anymore? I have heard about farmers with an affinity for flowers, for flowers event, even they are most known of their chemical affinity. Two nights, studios illuminated the space and transformed the white into something magic. During winter time, we held events to present the Snow Academy to the public, also during nighttime. And it was a nice coincidence, the super blue moon, that was one of our night studios. 13 bonfires in a late April night was our way of saying goodbye in a very dignified manner to our fleeting landscape. Gone, never to return. Oops, uh, just a video, we wanna share a video.
Funny, I had to ask for permission, and I received permission because that's a, there's a fireball on that place. But then I told them, but we won't use that fireball. We create our own fires. And even then, they gave me permission, but I never shared this video because it's my fear that I will never get for permission anymore for something like this. So that's maybe a reason, Nadia, when it's recorded, maybe we have to cut off this video, but no worries, I'm kidding. So, okay. <laughs> uh, long winters are still followed by spring. There's always hope. So I have to admit that I love to play soccer, but I'm not really good when it uh, comes down to spread pesticides, pesticides, herbicides, water, labor, in cash for our lawn. Henry David, David Thoreau wrote, quote, hope and the future for me are not in lawns. He called his neighbor's front yards a poor apology for a nature and art. So each year, Americans spend an average of 3 billion hours pushing or riding mowers most of which pollute at a rate 10 times that of that of our cars. In fact, if a lawn were a car, it would be a hammer, a resource intensive, plainly unsustainable luxury item that looks cool, but is environmentally destructive. A nice bowl shaped lawn in front of our architecture two building, again, a project on campus, for over a decade, I've been working on planting designs considered to be a friendly assault on the Canadian lawn. All designs follow a particular botanical, botanical choreography created to inspire a new ecological aesthetic and to provide habitats for various living beings. How much pioneering spirit does the Canadian lawn support? The proposal for the bowl-shaped land uh, lawn on the University of Manitoba campus seeks to strike a balance between the everyday and the extraordinary. Elfenkrokus is the German name for Crocus Thomasonianus. It means fairy crocus. These fairies are not native in Manitoba and we had never met them in this Canadian province before. After an extended adventurous voyage from Europe to New York and Montreal, they finally got their passports and arrived in Winnipeg, demonstrating that the new arrivals have no invasive intentions. The issuing authorities gave the green light for this project. Setting the stage for around 20,000 flowers, the project formed quite a spectacle in the first spring. The modest endeavor led to an explosion of lilac blue flowers and the lawn and transformed the space into a major focus of attention. Of course, this intervention came with a sincere, sincere hope of encouraging emo, uh, emulation on a larger scale and of initiating a metamorphosis of the Canadian lawn. But as it goes, the fairies did not reappear the next spring, although they were warmly welcomed by people, by people and bumblebees. The plan was to have 20 million fairies on campus, but it was a total failure. Maybe they didn't agree with the lawn care, or they have never experienced snow in May. But we are continually asked how the fairies are doing. And this is perhaps the greatest degree of success. The fairies are still alive in people's mind. A 
another project, Instant Garden. The young family has just moved into their new house. It was already spring, almost too late to start a garden project. And the new house devoured most of the budget. We suggested Instant Garden as a prelude for a more permanent garden. The yearning for a garden was realized on a mini lot. Winnipeg is a city of flood issues. Sandbagging is part of people's common memory. Every year, walls of white sandbag are all over the place during the snow melt. Sandbags can be reused if they are not contaminated. How many square meters has a paradise? The body of the garden was composed of white sandbags and eatable greenery and the worth of the worthless obtained an important meaning in this context. The touchable surface in this garden is calculated like a tender semi-permeable skin showing irritations, folds, color, aging, emotions, and sunburn. The skin fought weed back without any chemistry and reduced evaporation. We knew about the half-life of the material, but we didn't want to operate with creams. Stuffed in bags, the sand became mixed with the in-situ soil. That's a simply method for soil stabilization and a measure to create an airy soil with high oxygen content well drained and a pleasure to work with. The hope was that a next garden will grow next spring and we were looking forward to new, a new dance of chlorophyll, kids and butterflies. This le uh, led us uh, to uh, the project root Rooted in Clay. Making a garden means nothing more than to start a dialogue with the land and the living beings on it. Rooted in Clay is situated in a residential area in Winnipeg with beautiful views on the scenery uh, on the, uh, on the, above the Red River, seasonal, seasonal changing levels, annual floods, ongoing erosion and high concentration of red sediment, the Red River in Winnipeg is a highly dynamic urban water body. How to deal with this energy on a beautiful situated river plot? Our design for the uh, uh, rooted in clay garden is a response to this topological context. Rooted in clay based upon fluvial sediments Plants, light, and recycled materials prove that pleasant landscapes do not need vast resources. The controlled reuse, upgrading, and transformation of salvaged materials into a new context was the key to the garden. Rooted in clay provides a pleasant and warm welcome already at the entrance. Not a single nail or screw was used in this project. Only gravity joints, beams and boulders, roots and clay. And uh, solvent-free paint sprays it, uh, its bright color and, uh, and, and meets the requirements of our work in, the, in their entirety. In spring, the cutting uh, of the grasses is followed by the prelude of the lily flowered orange tulips and a reddish purple wheel of drumsticks. Our planting design is considered to be a friendly assault of the Canadian lawn, as Tima mentioned before, and has its sight on a new ecological aesthetic. It follows a particular botanical geography created to protect the land from erosion and to provide habitats for all living things. We planted a forest of roots, stabilizing uh, the garden's ground. It bypasses the city bylaw that insists on a maximum height of six inches for grass. With the monoculture of trimmed lawns cultivated on neighboring pro properties, 
the community bylaw inspectors are perplexed by our uh, atypical garden. The grass cannot be decreed as neglected lawn. No rule is broken, no ticket is issued. The entire garden is a space uh, that has connections to the roots, grasses, trees, and the river, a space in gentle motion. Colors, chlorophyll, and roses from a satisfying element not only thanks to the rose ships. Shortly before the bees and the fish say goodnight. This place invites you to place it longer, list, listen, think, eat, drink, and chat away to your heart's content. We see a lot of wildlife in this garden during summertime. We know that animals have developed infrastructure and techniques in order to survive in this extreme prairie climate, and we can support them through planting and design. In the winter, the snow nestles between the plates of grass, remaining fluffy and creating a perfect habitat for a wide variety of small mammals and insects to dig a network of tunnels. This pukak layer, uh, and this puka dwellers spend their winters under the snow. Pukak is an Inuit word for the complex layer of ice, crystals, and open space that forms at the base of a snowpack, uh, where there is little vegetation, such as on a Canadian lawn, no pukak layer forms. A garden rooted in clay. Next trial. It's an ongoing battle, a German tongue and the English TH, but I try to take it on and hopefully I will win it. So <laughs> the last project, the science courtyard is situated in a lovely setting, far from the hustle of the academic world and yet close to the heart of the University of Manitoba's Fort Garry campus. It is surrounded by buildings on three sides. Shady Grove acts as the fourth facade and provides a beautiful transition from the courtyard to the Red River. A cafeteria attracts many people. However, the courtyard is hidden and inaccessible. That was set to change. The project is mainly financed by student funds and thus the money should directly serve the students in their well-being on campus. It was further agreed that the silent location away from the most campus activities allowed for the application of methods that test materials, plants, and ideas, and go beyond the prevailing mandatory standards for open space projects on campus. The courtyard should be turned into a living lab and a pleasant place. The spacious platform stretches like a bridge between the Parker Building and the McRae Hall. We moved this board of limestones and concrete away from the building's shadow to catch the first rays of the spring sun. The light and the domesticated microclimate will draw people to this lucrative new field like bees to honey even before the acad academic summer break begins. Everything is clearly arranged and easily accessible. So that's the cafeteria and the student lounge. However, or perhaps for this very reason, this place offers plenty of pleasurable choices to escape from our busy everyday life. It is a good place if you look for silence and distraction while being on campus. We love to work with gaps and cracks because they offer opportunities for unexpected life and freedom within limits. So imagine a up to two kilometers thick package of ice on top of this surface. The traces are left by the glaciers. The stones are dolomites 
leftovers from creatures living in Ordovician seas 415 million years ago. We found this layer in a quarry 30 kilometers north of Winnipeg. The storms are big and heavy. They capture the sunlight, store the warmth of the day, and tell about the Manitoban landscape genesis. Ordovician seas, massive sheets of ice, processes of movement and sedimentation, limestones. If these stones were able to speak and to tell stories, there wouldn't be a need for a teacher in the classroom. Our new classroom, it's science courtyards. We applied and employed these stones as well. Granite leftovers from the, or deposited by glaciers in our landscape. So we found a few of them and they got their names. Bulldred, Bella, Angel, Rocky, Big Mac. So yeah, when you work on this project, projects, you know, it's not just about yourself. We were able to find a brother in crime, the guy here, a landscaper, a landscaping firm, willing to take risks with us. Without him and his willingness to take risks and to figure out everything with us, this project wouldn't exist. So we had fun together. Uh, in the summer of 2019. So we applied, even if it looks a little bit maybe random, so we applied fantasy and precision. So the water, there's a little bit of runoff for the water on this. And even during construction time, this was not the initial plan to do something like this. So it's an unexpected use, but it's absolutely fine and okay. We believe in the creativity of people using our spaces. So do tree, trees actually have a second life? Again, Bulldred, Bella, Angel, Rocky, Big Mac, they found their new home after a decent cut. So please take a seat and take a break. Joints and gaps between the materials are paramount, especially if you want to welcome ex unexpected life. I like to provide opportunities for seeds to spread by the wind and insects on their search for habitats. Driftwood with fingernails painted in red, trees and perennials growing up on a gravel lawn, in species rich flower meadows invite people and insects to stay and linger. The plan was to plant in summer 220, but due to COVID, everything was postponed. But last summer, so the red sand research, it's a research project, it's a mulch material in order to avoid pesticides and increasing biodiversity. So again, this summer we, were, we started planting we worked with plugs from Prairie Originals, a small nursery not far from Winnipeg, run by a young woman with passion for plants and originals, Prairie Originals. Kelly grows her own plants from autochthonous and regional seeds. And so far, they seem to do well. They need some maintenance for sure, but not too many weeds or unwanted grow in between. But we also welcomed some foreigners. They arrived in August. Irises from Oregon. Before the storm, dynamite, ginger snap, golden panda, or wonders never cease, to name a few. We tried to help them that they can acclimatize acclimatize in our hardiness zone three. That was right after planting, no, within the gaps, freedom within limits. And we hope that they will make friends with the natives. So far, they do well. And right now they saw maybe for the first time in their lives, snow. We hope that they can adapt 
and we will and will become accepted. We like to think that our designs never succumb to dogmatism or formalism, but rather provide doses of humor, irony, and sarcasm, and perhaps even poetry. Almost there. A few. Yeah, to, to summarize, uh, this is how we work. Uh, first, drawing an, an idea instead of a flat of images containing promises that are hard to keep, we push ourselves to concentrate firmly on an original idea in the form of a drawing or graphic. Second, treating existing futures, uh, features with respect. All creative concepts are oriented towards what is already present. New developments are carefully and respectfully integrated into the existing structures and into people's life. Third, employing risk over routine. We perceive, perceive design as an evolving situation between clients and designers in which we are, we are united by curiosity and the willingness to take a risk. Fourth, keeping critical distance and good humor. Sometimes we need to take a break from investigating the soul uh, of, of architectural design and discuss the soul of a good class of wine among fr friends and instead. It is important to maintain some distance from our work in order to ensure we don't lose ourselves in it. And finally, fifth, reaching discovery, invention and controlled madness. There will be always conflicting urges between the imagination that we try to bring under control and the discipline that we strive to set free. A productive balance can therefore be found between spontaneous innocence, naive optimism, and the healthy skepticism that tempers any excess. Thank you. <laughs> 